Hey y'all, I'm Jules. Welcome back to another sh- episode of Spirit Sherpa. Yeah, I'm trying to do it without looking at my notes. <laughs> the show that helps and encourages you on your journey to unlock your magic mojo. Here with me as always, through my bloopers and everything, is Kelly Sparta, the Spirit Doctor. <laughs> I was trying not to look. Hello. I know. Well, you'll get there eventually. It'll be fine. It'll be <laughs> it fine. Be feel better on the times when Joey wasn't around and I had to start doing it. I I didn't know it either, and I'd been through like two hundred episodes. <laughs> I had to write it down. So <laughs> if you don't say it all the time, you don't know. So yeah, <laughs> that's the way it is. Our audience members are going. Well, I could say it. <laughs> yeah, you think that until you try it, and then you're like, oh crap. What was it again? <laughs> yeah, and then now I'm trying to look directly into the camera and go, hi, guys, how's it going? And I'm Hello. like, crap, I forgot my words. So, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, shit happens, right? Yeah, you know. But yeah. we, have an, we have a very special day today. This is episode 300 Woo-hoo! that we are recording. Yes. Woo-woo. Well, and... And and we've been getting we've been uh, uh, charting in so many new countries. So we've been charting in Namibia and mm-hmm. Botswana, ba- and, Botswana, and China. That's because all the TikToks, right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, most recently in the U.S. again. So oh, we yeah. are charting cool. all over the place. That, that one came in yesterday. So um, nice. to everybody who is listening in those countries and around the world, thank you so much for being here. Thank we you, really thank you, thank you. you. We, we yes. love you and we would love to hear from you. So if, you, if you've enjoyed it, please rate, like, you know, send us an email, let us know what you think. Anything Subscribe like on the YouTube thing, the little <laughs> button thing down here, wherever it is. Do do the YouTube mm. things because that helps get us out to more listeners, and you know we got to work with algorithms and all that kind of good stuff. So, click the subscribe button, hit the like button. If you don't like us, that's okay. Like us anyway. We'll get better. Send suggestions. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Don't mind me. My sinus is just released down the back of my throat. Never, never fails. Happens the minute I get on air. The so, minute you get on. <clears throat> Murphy's Law. Yeah. Yes. So <clears throat> we are super excited because, you know, 300 episodes. We've been doing this. Uh, well, I've been doing this. Jules has been yeah. been with us more recently. But I've been doing this for four, four and three quarters years now. <clears throat> Every week. For four and three quarters years. And for a while, I was doing minis as well for six months, where I was doing three of those, too. So it was just like, oh! <clears throat> You're glutton so for punishment. Busy. I am a glutton for punishment. I Literally, it is just that I just have too much to say. And I cannot stop myself. <clears throat> mm-hmm. I was laughing the other day because um, I was talking to a friend of mine And I was saying, look, you know, I'm putting together this new program and I'm doing all this stuff and I cannot stop myself from fire hosing the fuck out of people. (laughs) I'm like, I go to write a beginner's thing and I'm like, okay, so then this and this and this and this, right? Okay. So we've got these, these three things or these five things that I want to talk about. Oh, but in order to understand those, you have to understand this and this and this and this. And then you have to know that and that and that and that. And then this and this and this. And oh, you know, there, here's a more advanced version of that. And I'm like, next thing I know, I've got like a 60 part class. <laughs> I just, I was like, I don't know. I am incapable of writing something short. <laughs> Well, you know, and <laughs> authors call that a series. That's when they have like yeah. the, the, the Harry Potter series. So, yeah. you know, I know you wrote one book, but, you know, maybe we can get some others going. I'm just saying. Yeah. I told, so, I told yeah. you you were a walking encyclopedia. <laughs> I am. I am a walking encyclopedia. And so, you know, hence the reason this podcast has been so freaking long. So I just have to say. Okay. There you go. Help me. Yeah, give her more stuff to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and, and the thing is, is that I've only scratched the surface. There, the mm-hmm. more advanced stuff I have so much to say about, right? So 
and, and that brings me to my next point, which is I am writing a new series. And uh, it starts with a program called Welcome to the Woo. And, welcome uh, to the Woo. Welcome to the Woo. By the time right. you hear this, this will be out. Okay. So um, I'm, I'm literally putting it into the learning platform as we speak. And so it's going to be freaking awesome. It's, it's specifically designed for spiritual practitioners who are uh, looking to up their spiritual game. So it's everything from, you know, the basics of energetics and understanding the energetic world and how to work with your spirit guides and your team, your spirit team and how to work in the unseen worlds and how to manage your own energy and protect yourself. And then how do you protect your clients and how do you stay protected when you're working with clients? And, you know, it's all of that. And it's, it's basically designed to help a spiritual practitioner begin to trust themselves as being really solid in their practice. Uh, that's what the first year is going to be about. And then we're going to move on and do other things, right? We're going to do more advanced topics the further along we go for people who are further along in their journey. So I'm cool. super cool. excited about this. Yeah. And it seems like that's going to be a lot of practical applications too. Yes. You know, because if I'm working with some, I'm going to make it up that I'm reading someone tarot for someone, which I don't do. But if I were, you know, I have to make sure all of my energy is here. I'm not mixing my energy with them, you know, yes. or if I'm giving someone Reiki that I'm not, you know, getting in my own way of having the Reiki come through me, you know, to help them heal yeah, themselves. Or getting attached to the outcome or forcing yeah. things to release that aren't ready to go, you know, all sorts of stuff right. like that. Yeah. Cool. In the woo. Yeah. In the woo. In the we're, woo. I love it. I love in it. In the woo. Yes. So, and this is, you know, instead of, um, you know, leading with the personal growth side with this, what I'm doing is I'm leading with the woo and doing the personal growth stuff along with it. So, uh, there will be, okay. uh, personal growth pieces included in the process because as we've talked about ad nauseum on this podcast, you cannot be good at magic and energy work and, and metaphysics and manifestation and all of this stuff, unless you get your own shit out of the way. And so that will be included in the process as well. So <clears throat> it's super. All exciting. right. Very so, yeah. cool. Yeah. Very cool. And so if people want to start kind of peeking around and trying to find out about the program, it'll be on the website by the time this comes out. It's not all right. <laughs> yes. Don't, don't sit again. But we're, we're recording this and we're recording in ahead of time. So, yes. Yeah. We're recording in mid March. So by the time this, the, when's this episode airing, it's airing. Uh, this is going to be April, April the 9th. Yeah. April 9th oh, yeah. ish. It'll yeah. be up by then. And I'm going to be doing a, uh, a workshop on, uh, on the, I'm going to be doing a zoom workshop on the, um, 13th of April <clears throat> in the evening. Um, and if you're following me on Facebook or if you're on my mailing list, actually, if you're on my mailing list, uh, it's definitely going to be coming out on the mailing list. I've got a whole series of emails we're sending out about it, but I'm doing a workshop called, I'm looking up the title. What did I come up with? <laughs> um, of course my, my emails are going very slowly, uh, or my, my stuff. It's here. okay. Oh, there the, it is. The yeah. It's called Rising to Your Potential, Unleashing Your Inner Sp Spiritual Practitioner. And so we're going to, on that class, we're going to talk about stepping into the fullest expression of your authentic self and embracing that big purpose you're terrified is yours, which you guys know you're terrified. I get it. I was too. How to recognize when your resistance to change is holding you back, the identity shifts that are necessary to truly step into your life's mission embracing your value as a spiritual practitioner so that you can finally change and get so finally charge and get what you're worth. Um, and so that one, it's going to be 97 bucks for that course. So if you are a spiritual practitioner and you're looking to get a little more detail on how that's going to work with things, then that would be a great program for you to come out to. It's all about living up to your potential, baby. We yeah. have to live up to our potential. Yeah. So I love it. Love anyway, it. Anyway, let's let's get on to the topic at hand, yeah. which is the benefits of a cross discipline approach to spiritual healing. Yes. And you know, this goes hand in hand with what we were just talking about with the with the uh, Welcome to the Woo program. 
And, you know, that is the benefit of we're working on multiple levels, right? So if you think of the spiritual world as a great big crystal, right? Massive, multifaceted crystal. And each spiritual practice, each wellness practice, each... Oh, she's got her crystal ball. There we go. <laughs> so each of the, um, the personal growth practices... Meditation, uh, religion, you know, uh, healing practices, all of the different pieces and parts, magic, angels, tarot cards, crystals, you know, all of it is one facet on that massive crystal of reality, right? You have to understand that when you look at that facet, it has a lot of content in it. But it's just one facet. You can go very deep into a single facet and feel like, oh, my God, I know so much. But mm -hmm. if you don't look at another facet, your, limit, your, your, your knowledge is very limited, right? So <clears throat> there is a benefit to going wide on your search as well as going deep on the things that really resonate for you. And this is one of those pieces that, that I talk about all the time is that, you know, you know, people generally, if they want to feel better about themselves, they go into personal growth work. Well, but the personal growth work is going to address your mindset. It's going to address your thought processes. It's going to address your habits, but it's not going to address the energetics. And if your trauma is stored in your cells and it's, and your belief structures are stored in your energy field, in your chakras, and you're connected uh, you're, you're hanging out in a, in a household with an energy vampire who's sucking all your energy and you're working at a job that is happy to take advantage of you and you're giving every ounce of what you have away because you've got these codependent tendencies, you know, then, you know, there's, there's all these pieces and parts that are not going to be addressed by the personal growth industry. And then if you add on to that, that, you know, the trauma caused a, a spike in cortisol levels and adrenaline and it messed with your hormones and you, you're, you've, uh, your, your gut chemistry has gotten off and now you are having a hard time just staying calm and because you've got a B deficiency because your gut isn't absorbing vitamin B well or because you eat like crap because you're eating comfort food because you need the comfort because you're traumatized and you haven't dealt with that yet or, you know, all of this, if you don't look in the wellness world, you're not going to get those pieces addressed, right? Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, it's, it's the, each thing that you deal with in your life is going to have multiple aspects to it. And I know we're all looking for a magic pill. I get it. <clears throat> we're all looking for a magic pill. It, 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 it just, I, I'm sorry to say it doesn't exist. Doesn't right? exist. There doesn't are no exist. shortcuts. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so when we look at this, what you have to recognize is that staying in one arena is going to be inherently limiting to your ability to grow. And, <clears throat> excuse me. And when you go to do, so if you're in a place where you've been growing for a while and you've been doing well and you've been successful and your, your progress has been pretty good, right? And then suddenly you stop making progress, right? It is not because you suck that you stopped making progress. It is probably not even because your resistance is up. Okay. Although that can be the case. If you get to something that's really core and you, you are like, oh, I don't know that I want to do this. Right. But you will mm -hmm. know if that's the case, you'll be like, no, or here, let me go somewhere else and do something else because I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. I can't, I can't, I can't. Right. So <clears throat> if those things aren't happening, then you really need to consider that it may be one of these other facets that is coming into play right now that you need to go and address there as opposed to doing what you've been doing. Right. Even if what you've been doing has been successful, it's not because what you're doing sucks for you now. It's because 
you need to do something else and then probably come back to what you were doing because what you were doing was working before, right? So that method generally works for you. So here's the thing. <clears throat> when we work with people and we teach them about self-inquiry, we're teaching them multiple different aspects of self-inquiry. Okay. And the reason for that is because not every aspect will work for every situation. Okay? It's not one size fits all. No. And it's not even every, not every aspect will work for every person, which that's also true, but it's even within a person, you may have to use five or six different types of self inquiry to get through the work that you're doing. And so, you know, because, you know, your ego goes, nope, nobody home, nobody home, nobody home, uh -huh. nobody home, right? And it's like, nope, 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 talk to the hand, right? Wow, that's old. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, you know, that's what they do. <clears throat> that's what your ego does. And so when you, when you learn multiple aspects of self-inquiry work, you have the ability to sort of circumvent that process if you go in often enough and, and try enough different pathways. And this is just another aspect of that, right? It's just you're, you're going to a different arena in order to, to do the work rather than doing it, uh, rather than trying to power through, which we have this habit of trying to power through, right? If you find yourself in power through mode when you are doing your spiritual work, you are not doing the right thing, okay? Because spiritual work does not need to be powered through. And in fact, it doesn't work to power through it. You know, the, if you are finding yourself in power through mode, one, you're burned out, stop, take a break, you know, allow some integration, go lie on the beach somewhere, you know, take a, take a moment. And, and this is another piece. If you've, if you are finding yourself like binging, and I don't mean like binging a podcast because, you know, binging, binging a podcast is getting information. But if you find yourself like, <clears throat> I have to know everything I have to, you know, I'm, I'm, if you find yourself obsessing about spiritual stuff, like you can't stop yourself from watching videos and listening to podcasts and reading books and la 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 take two weeks off. Okay. Yeah. Because you don't want to get to the point where it's like affecting your uh, your everyday life. Well, it, it's, it's more like, um, you, you have hit an obsessive stage because you're running away from your own emotions. You're running away from something that's coming up inside of you. And so you don't want to see what's inside of you. So you're like externalized your focus and you're like, la, 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 let me take all this in. La, 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 la. I can't be with where, what, what's inside of me, ah, la, 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 la. you know, take two weeks off and just yeah. sit with it. Right. And then once you're feeling calm again, then you can come back to, to looking spiritual stuff, but give yourself a hard and fast two weeks off. And I can't tell you how many of my students over the years I've given this assignment to, and, and it's revolutionary, right? It breaks that pattern of resistance that they're in with that panic spin, you know, consume, consume, consume thing mm -hmm. that's going on. Um, because ultimately, you know, while yes, the information that comes in from the outside world, it can be helpful. You know, I mean, that's why I do this podcast is try, try and help you guys. Right. Um, but the answers are all inside of you. So if you can't take what's external and internalize it, it doesn't do you any good. You just become this font of knowledge that does not get implemented. Right. And so Nobody comes into this world going, oh, that's funky cool. Let's learn that. They don't do that. They come in going, I'm in pain. I'm unhappy. Uh, my spiritual doors have just been blown off. <laughs> and I'm suddenly seeing things. Help. <laughs> right? They, they all come in going, help, for a variety help. of different reasons. Help. Right? Am I really yeah. seeing the orbs flying around and, you know, all of this? and Yeah. Am I yeah. really talking to people in and other realms? I'm hearing of you. Mind? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. now, now if you would, if I say I would be powering through, powering through, I'm just, I'm going to get through. Doesn't that, if I go too much like that, what you're saying, wouldn't that, or couldn't that affect my life force? 
if I yeah, I mean, just like any other, yeah, just like any other obsession, it will impact your life force because you're you're handing your power over to the thing that you are obsessing about. That's the thing, uh. right? Because the the obsession becomes the I need this thing to make me okay, right? I need this thing to make my life okay. I need this thing to make my energy okay, right? And so when you are doing that, then you have a situation where you're handing your power over to an external thing, external force, external person, external, you know, whatever, right? And when you do that, you're going to feel more needy the more you do it, right? Because you've, you've lost your power. And it's not because somebody else took it. Let's be clear. Nobody took your power. Nobody can take your power without your permission. Let me be very clear. I've seen TikToks where they're like, oh, I take my power back. The power that was taken from me. No, 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 no. <laughs> no power can be taken from you unless you hand it over. So let's be very clear. The Myth I number one, you back. gave that away. <laughs> That's right. I take my power back from the places I put it that were not good for me. Right? It's like, okay, I take my power back from those places. You know, this is one of the reasons why, and I think we talked about this way early on in the podcast, but, you know, not everybody's listened to all 300 episodes now. So, um, but it's one of the reasons why I, I recommend that you sleep whole at night. And so what that means is that before you go to sleep, you pull your energy back from absolutely everything that you've handed it to over the course of the day. Um, and the first time you do this, it's over the course of every, everything, right? <laughs> so the first time you do it, you take it back from everything you've ever done it to. And then, then if you do this every night, like I recommend, then it's just over the course of the day, right? And so you take back your energy before you go to sleep so that you sleep whole. One, that's going to help you not have the blah, 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 that happens when you close your eyes. And you're like, you're exhausted. You've been letting the TV watch you for an hour or two. And, and you're like, okay, I'm ready to go to bed. And you walk to your bed and you lay down and your brain goes, hi, 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 hi. <laughs> Hello, hello. I, I, I've been waiting for you to pay attention to me. Here's all the things. La, 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 la. And you're like, mm -hmm. go away, right? And it's doing that because your energy is still attached to all the things, right? So you want to pull your energy back from all the things, and that's going to help your brain to calm down. So yes. that is, and again, these are things that are, you know, energetic practices that if you were doing personal growth work, you would not get, right? Or if you were just doing wellness work, you would not get, right? So this is, again, coming back to that cross-discipline approach, right? So, um, and, and, and this counts even if, let's say that you're a, a Reiki practitioner, because we've talked about mm -hmm. that with you, Jewel. Mm -hmm. um, so the, if you're doing Reiki or, mm -hmm. you know, some other form of, of healing, it's valuable to learn other methods of healing, it's valuable to go out and study Chinese medicine or the chakra system or hands-on healing, you know, uh, Barbara Brennan's hands of light stuff, right? Or shamanic healing or, you know, any number. I mean, oh my God, there's so many practices, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, cranial yeah. sacral work and, you know, uh, all of the things, right? Reading, reading Grey's Anatomy, super helpful, right? All of it. And that's because you're learning from multiple dis different disciplines. I, I went to a friend's, we, we do movie night at a friend's house uh, once a week. And I went to her house and we watched one of my favorite movies, which is Doctor Strange. And uh, it's a Marvel movie. Yeah, love it, right? Love Comertage. it. Comertage yes. is, is their version of Hogwarts, right? Um, and, um, and one of the things that she says in the movie is that she's like, okay, so he, he's asking her how she healed somebody's uh, spinal fracture. Spinal fracture. And, and she says, well, maybe you like this system. And she shows him the Chinese medicine. And he's like, are you kidding me? Because he's a surgeon, right? And then she goes, oh, you don't like that one? Okay, how about this one? And she shows him the chakra system. And he's like, seriously? And she's like, you know, there are a million of these. And they all see one facet of the reality, right? Mm -hmm. 
And that's, it's true whether you're dealing with healing, it's true whether you're dealing with personal growth work, it's true whether you're dealing with identity shift work and initiation processes and energy work, and or if you want to call it magic, you know, all of the pieces, right? There are so many different languages and words and, and ways of being that address the same concepts. And so the more you look at these wider swaths of information, the more you can integrate these processes, right? So, you know, I've been known to mix shiatsu, which is Chinese medicine, Chinese acupressure, right? I've been known to mix that with Reiki or shamanic healing or, mm -hmm. you know, massage or sound healing. Sound he I, I was going to say sound I'm healing with Reiki. Match. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mix uh, and match all the time. Yeah. Uh, cri yeah. Uh, healing properties for crystals, you bring that into yep. your Reiki. I mean, exactly. it, it's, to me, it's adding more tools to your toolbox yeah. because you can't always rely on a hammer. A hammer right. is not the saw, you know. <laughs> right. You know, I actually, when I was doing Reiki, I attuned, I had a huge amethyst tower uh, and it was like three feet tall. It was big tower. Yeah. And I had it on a, on a chair in my Reiki room and I attuned the amethyst tower to Reiki too. And it provided additional Reiki as I was doing the healing on the clients too. Now I had the nice. crystal permission to do that and I did it over time. I didn't do it straight to Reiki too. I, I built it up, but, um, but that's another way to, to combine your things. Right. And you know, energetic hygiene, right. It's like, okay, well, how are you cleaning your room? Do you want to get some, do you want to call in help from the other side to help them clean? Maybe. Right. Do you want to do it yourself? Maybe. Right. Do you want to have mm -hmm. a physical aspect to it? Do you want to like sweep the floor and, and show it as sweeping the, the energy that you dropped on the floor out of, out of the house, you know, or out of the room, whatever, um, you know, how, how do you want, do you want to, do you want to take the floor and turn it into the floor of a, of a forest, which is what I did when I had mm -hmm. my Reiki studio, I turned it into a forest floor. So it automatically grounded because it hit the ground. Right. Um, you know, how, how do you want to design your space? Well, if you only have one tool to use, you're only going to do it the way that you've been taught. And a lot of those ways are limited and they're not as broadly based, um, you know, like most of the Reiki classes I've, I've ever seen don't include setting much of a container, right? They certainly don't have a lot of energetic hygiene. They have, you know, protect yourself. They might have protect the walls. They rarely include protect the floor mm -hmm. and ceiling, which is kind of pointless to protect the walls if you don't protect the floor and ceiling too. But, you know, because my, right. my education said fl just the walls. Um, there's no asking, you know, it, it's just, and again, every teacher in Reiki is different. With So I'm not mm -hmm. going to be speaking about everybody. But, you know, the ones that I have seen uh, and heard from other people about, they rarely have things that... Uh, teach you more advanced skills around taking care of yourself and taking care of your space and things like that. So, and, right. and even basic skills. I mean, you know, I, I know a lot of Reiki practitioners who had no idea that they needed to pick up the stuff that they dropped off the floor on the floor that came out of the client. They had no idea that they needed to clear that. Yeah. Terrifying. Right. That's part of your Reiki. So Reiki. Well, that's part of mine anyway. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that, that's the whole part of it. Yeah, and yet that that has not been the case with everybody. Um, yeah, I had people who were like, "I'm supposed to what?" Like, yeah, you're tracking that shit around your house, babe. Yeah, <laughs> stop it. And also, and also yeah. for the client too. Yeah, you know, too. you know, they they have to clear all that. So and um, well, and if they get off the table, they could pick it back up off the floor. You know. Yeah. So because they're already in resonance with it because they it was already on their field. So. All of these things, right? These are the reasons why we cross pollinate so that we can amplify our knowledge and expand our, our abilities and be able to use these things to combine them to create something that is greater than the whole, right? Greater than the sum of its parts, I should say. Can't be greater than the whole. <laughs> yeah. You never know. In some dimensions, it might be. Who knows? <laughs> Yeah, I, just, yeah, I could hear people's brains going, huh? What? And I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry. Y'all yeah, know what we meant. It's okay. It's okay. On okay. 
So, <laughs> like, yeah, right, whatever. My brain's in two places at once. This is the problem by location. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so yeah, that's basically what we're talking about here, right? And and mm -hmm. I know we've we've talked about this in the past, but if you truly want to create transformation in your life, you need to cross pollinate. Uh, because you will inherently be limited by the system in which you operate if you don't. And so much like we say that, you know, if you don't do your personal growth work, you're not going to be able to up-level your energetics. The same is true if you only work your energetics and you don't do the personal growth work, right? Uh, or, no, wait, yeah. I just said that. <laughs> wait, did I? I don't know. You know what I mean? Both, right? Or you're yes. also going to be limited by, you know, if your if your model that you're working with doesn't cover something that you need, you're going to be limited. That's also the case. So, you know, this is this is one of those things that I really I highly encourage people <laughs> do not treat your teachers like gurus. Do not just become a a groupie to your teachers. And, and want to just be them, right? Because you yeah. are not them. And mm -hmm. every spiritual journey is unique. And anybody who says, I want you to be a mini me is not doing you a service. No. Okay. They're, that's an ego trip for them. Right. So what you want to do is make sure that you are in charge of your own spiritual process. And if you're working with a teacher you want to make sure that it's a teacher who is not going to be threatened by you going outside of their stuff to get the piece that you need, right? In fact, ideally, they would say, you know what? I think you need this piece. I'm going to recommend that you work with this person over here because they're really good at that, right? And they're, they're going to send you over to get that piece done and then say, come back and see me when you're done, right? That's how that's going to fly. And that's what a good teacher will do. But if you have a teacher that goes, no, oh, you cannot leave my my area, and you must do they get only territorial. what I tell you to do, and don't go outside of it, and you will only be be messing with the process. It's like, <laughs> okay, but if they poo poo every idea that you have, mm. right now, yeah. you know, if you get a good reason for it, you know, I will say that a lot of my people love to sh skip steps, right? <laughs> You guys, you guys love to skip steps. I want the shortcut. I want to get there yesterday. I love to skip my steps, right? You know, that's, that's a different thing in saying, yeah. okay, I know you want to skip this step, but here's the reason why you can't. And here's, mm -hmm. here's the step that you're trying to skip. And this is, the, this is resistance for you, right? That's one thing. But to say, I am the almighty Oz and you will follow my instructions, right? Nah, then you've got somebody who's into their ego more than they are into your progress, right? So, and this sort of wandered a field. We went back to the how to pick a spiritual teacher episode <laughs> for a moment here. But I, it okay. had to be said, right? It had to be said because mm -hmm. so many of the places that you go to get your uh, deep dives are very insular, and they're like, you don't go outside of this practice and you don't ask questions outside. Like I, when I was talking to my Shiatsu instructor, I was also yeah. taking my Reiki master at the same time. And I would come to him and talk to him about Reiki and he'd be like, that's crap. <laughs> and I'm like, it's I'm like, really? explain, to me, <laughs> explain to me how you can sit here and tell me that there is chi, which is energy running through the meridian systems, but that any other form of energy work that, you know, and, and you're spending mm -hmm. all this time explaining to me how to manipulate the energy in those energy systems, but that any other kind of energy work is crap. Explain to me how that works in your head, right? <laughs> like, how is one energy valid and the other energy isn't? And he's like, Chinese medicine has been around for 5,000 years. I'm like, uh, I'm pretty sure the chakra system stuff has been around for a similar amount of time in India. So what's your point? Right. And, you know, he just wasn't going to hear it. Right. Which was fine. I mean, I wasn't my job to convert him, but, you know, he was not open to the conversation about how to combine the two. Right. I had to do but, that work myself. Right. But you did not allow his influence or his, his belief system for his journey to then influence yes. your journey. And I think yes. that's, that's a very important message, you know, for, for today's episode, you know, I look at it as like, you know, 
I don't have all the answers, you know, and I don't, who knows where my journey is going. But if I'm looking at different little things like, let's say, crystals or whatever, and I'm like, who that might lead me toward where um, my higher purpose. So yeah. who knows when you start looking at all these different, you know, uh, different dimensions and diff- different things, uh, not just one way of looking at it. But, hey, look, OK, let's look at it this way. You have to have an open mind to be in the woo-woo world to begin with, okay? You know, unicorns are real, dragons are real, magic is real, okay? If you say that to someone who has a closed mind, they're going to look at you like you have three heads. So right. we're always already in the woo-woo world with an open mind, so keep that open mind. Why are you going to go back to being a muggle? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice you know? Harry Potter reference. Thank you for there that. You. Yeah. I tried. <laughs> and mundane, if you don't know Harry Potter, we can use the word mundane, right? Yes, um, yes. So, yeah, it's, um, and, and I think that's probably, you know, we'll call it a jewelism today because you did it. <laughs> like, you know, walk your own path, right? Walk your own path, mm-hmm. trust yourself. And if this you don't know how to walk your path and trust yourself, then, you know, do the inner work required to, to learn how to trust yourself. And, you know, we can help you with that if that's something you're looking to do. So, yeah. All right. The, uh, the shadow work quiz would help with that, right? If you're ready for shadow, your shadow work. Yeah. Shadow work quiz, quiz will help you know where to work, but it, it's not going to tell you how to trust yourself per se. Right. So, but it'll tell you where you are in your work process and, and what to work on next. Yes. So. There you go. Okay. All right. Well, I guess that's all that we have time for this week. That yes. Is. All right. Tune in next time when Kelly adds another chapter into your guide to energy, magic, and the spirit world. I'm Jules here with Kelly Sparta, and you have been listening to Spirit Sherpa. So long, everybody. Bye. <laughs>